Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to look at deductions and losses and specifically rental of vacations home. In this session, we'll include examples. Once I say I'm including examples, it means at some point in the past, in a prior session, I looked at the lecture. So if you want to see the explanation, please look at the previous session in this playlist. This topic is covered in an income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam as always i would like to remind you that i would like to connect with you my viewers on a personal as well as a professional level life is too short let's go ahead and connect uh, you can connect with me on linkedin this is my linkedin profile i do post my lectures as well as other related news about cpa and accounting my facebook page you can like my facebook page and connect with with me on my personal facebook you want to make sure you subscribe to my youtube like my youtube share my youtube this is where i house all my lectures and i do have a twitter account i also put my lectures on my website it's not 100 percent updated Let's go ahead and take a look at the first example and see how this works. So we have Adlin. Adlin, who lives in a winter resort area, rented her personal residency for 14 days. That's what she did. While she was visiting Brussels, she was in Europe visiting Brussels, and that's what she did. Rent income was $5,000, and related expenses were as follows. She incurred 3800 30, of uh, real property taxes, mortgage interest, utilities, insurance, repairs, and depreciation. Determine the effect on Adlin's AGI. Now, here this is, if you get those questions on the exam as a multiple choice or as a problem, this is easy answer. Why it's an easy answer? Because if you know the rules, and what are the rules here? Well, if you know that Adlin rented her house less than 15 days, fewer than 15 days, she only rented her house 14 days, there is no really consequences. There is no income to be included and there is no deduction to be taken. What does that mean? It means the income is not included and all these deductions are not taken. Now, not a caveat, just want to make sure you're aware that this is considered a personal residence and because it's a personal residence, her property taxes and her interests is, is deducted on Schedule A, assuming she's going to itemize, deducted on Schedule A, but that has nothing to do with her rental property because in this scenario, the rental property is considered strictly personal use. Okay, hopefully this is easy. This is easy questions if you get on the exam or on the CPA exam. The next problem um, during the during the year, um, actually this problem what I did is I want to look at it on an Excel sheet because um, we will need to do some computation, so it's very important that we do it on the Excel sheet. So we have, this is not a leap year. Now we have Anna in this situation, rented her vacation home for 30 days, used it personally for 20 days. So notice what we have here. Let me just highlight what's important. So she rented it for more than 15 days, and she used it for more than 14 days or 10% of the rental days. So, and left it vacant for 315 days. So what are we looking at here? So again, let me just uh, look at this. So she, re she rented it more than 30 days and she lived in it more than 14 days or greater than 10% of the rental days. What do we have on our hand? We have what's called personal slash rental, basically a hybrid. Now, what do we know about hybrid? If the, if the property is considered hybrid use or personal personal slash rental then the it's it's treated like a hobby and how do we treat hobby losses basically they are deducted to the extent of income so the word the best case scenario you can hope for is zero income okay zero income means you break even so we have rental income we have real estate taxes we have mortgage we have utilities repair so on and so forth the first thing is they want us to do is compute anna's net income or loss and the amount she itemized on her tax return using the court's approach. So they want us to do both the uh, rental income as well as the amount deducted on her deducted on her uh, on her uh, schedule A. Okay, let's let me stop inking here. All right, let me, okay, I, I stopped inking. All right, now first of all, under the we're going to start with the court approach. Well, the first thing is we're going to include is the $7,000 of income. So that's starting with that. She include $7,000 of her income. Now, the next thing is we have to do is we have to know which items do we deduct. Now, you need to know that the items that are deductible anyway gets deducted first. What items are deductibles anyway? 
Well, the items that are deductibles anyway are mortgage, interest, and real estate taxes. So here I'm going to highlight those. So mortgage, interest, and real estate taxes. Now under the court formula, how do we how do we deduct those? How do we deduct those? Well, under court formula, remember we use the number of days rented, which is thirty days. Let me just change the inking here. We're going to use number of days rented, which is 30 days, divided it by the number of days in a year, which is 365, 365, 365 days. Okay. So what does that mean? That means we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead, add up rental, rental, which is uh, a real estate tax is 2,500 plus mortgage interest 9,000 and we're going to multiply this. I'm going to multiply this by 30, the number of days rented divided by 365 by 365. Okay, so this is the formula and I'm going to be able to deduct $945. So there we go. 7,000 of income minus 945 gives me 6,055. This is the amount that's remainder to apply against operating expenses and depreciation. Operating expenses here are utilities and repair. The next thing I'm going to look at is re utilities and repairs. Utilities and repairs, I have 2,400 plus 1,000. I'm going to multiply this by a ratio. What ratio do we use for those expenses? Whether it's under the court or the IRS system, we're going to use the number of days uh, the number of days rented divided by the number of days used, which is rented and personal, which is 30 divided by 350. Notice the ratio here, 30 divided by 350, is different than the ratio we used here, 30 divided by 365. So the taxes and mortgage interest, they got treated differently under the court's approach. Now, after we deducted utilities, we still have $4,015 remainder. Guess what? Now we're going to include depreciation. We have depreciation of $7,500. We're going to take $7,500. Also multiply it by 30 divided by 50. And that's going to give us $4,050. Guess what? We cannot deduct $4,050 because that's going to give us a loss. Okay? That's not, that's going to give us loss. This is we have. This is net rental income which we cannot have income so what's going to happen because we cannot have net rental income we're going to have to plug in 4015 that's going to give us a loss therefore this is how we will approach this under the courts under the court now keep in mind keep in mind what happened is this um, let's see remember we had in total mortgage and interest in total mortgage and interest we had 11,500, which is those two together, we already used up 945. What does that mean? It means on Schedule A, we could still deduct 10,555. That's going to go on Schedule A because they want us to know what goes on Schedule A. Okay, what can be itemized? That's, a, that's the amount that's going to be itemized. So this is the uh, court's approach. Let's look at the IRS approach. Under the IRS approach, income is obviously included, $7,000. Taxes and interest. Now, this is where it makes a difference. I'm going to take my taxes, which is 2,500 plus my interest, 9,000. Those are the items that are deductible anyway, gets deducted first. And here I'm going to multiply them. I'm going to multiply them by 30 divided by 50. Not 30 divided by 365 under the IRS approach. I multiply this ratio by 30 divided by 60. Notice here I divided by 30 divided by 365. Here I divided 30 divided by 60. 30 divided by 50. What I, what I left is is $100. And you know, if I take my repairs and utilities multiplied by 30 divided by 50, it's going to give me more than 100. Therefore, the only thing I can deduct is 100. Therefore, I have zero and I'm done. This is under the IRS approach. So no, notice under both method, I have net income of zero. But the question is, if you are the taxpayer, which method you would prefer to use? Okay, that's the question, which method you would prefer to use? And you, you, I hope you understand, or I hope you can see that you prefer to use this method. Now, why? Why? Because this, because under this method, you are able to use your utilities and depreciation as expenses. Notice you expense utilities and depreciation. Okay. And the amount that you did not take in, in mortgage and interest, what happened is you're going to take it on your schedule A. 
But in this scenario, what happened, you consumed most of your mortgage and interest and what's left of mortgage and interest, you're going to have some left, okay? So you're going to have 11,500 minus, so you're going to have left in mortgage and interest, 11,500, you're going to have 11,500 minus 6,900, whatever that amount is, goes to Schedule A. It's not zero, whatever that amount is, goes to Schedule A, which is 4,600, which is 4,600, goes on Schedule A, okay? But your total deductions are higher under the court's approach because utilities and repaired, if you don't deduct them, you can't use them. So utilities and repaired, basically you only used under the IRS approach, you only used of all of those $100, you did not use this. Now I did not mention, what about the roof? It's a capital expenditure. What is a capital expenditure? It means it's added to the cost of the house, to the basis, and it's taken in depreciation. It means it's accounted for. I did not talk about this, but there it is. Okay, so that's that. Now, how would your answer to, prob to this problem differ if Anna has rented the house 87 days and has used it for 13? Well, if she rented it for 87 days, that's definitely kind of, we're, we're, we're going toward rental. And when we look at the personal days, it's less than 14. Therefore, now the property is rental. So let me just erase this, uh, erase everything. Okay. So here, what they want us to do is to change the scenario. Simply put, when we change the scenario, now rental becoming, uh, rental becoming is the primary objective, 87 days and 13 days. 13 days is less than, not greater to less than 14. Okay and 87 days is is more and if we take 87 times 10 percent that's going to give us 8.7 days but we cannot use 8.7 days we have to use 13 days we have to compare it to the greater of 14 days or 10 percent of the rental days therefore it's a primarily rental what do we need to do here let me just delete those numbers now what's going to happen is we're going to have to allocate because 87 percent. How did I come up with eighty-seven percent versus thirteen percent? Well, it's eighty-seven per eighty-seven days plus thirteen equal to one hundred. So eighty-seven percent of the time it was used for business. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't, say, I didn't. I didn't. I meant to say not business. Let's make sure we use the proper term. Rental. Eighty-seven percent for rental and thirteen percent for personal. Okay. So now what's going to happen is under the rental, they would report seven thousand. Mortgage and interest is 11,500. Then we're going to multiply this by 0 0.87, 87%. And that's going to give us 10,055. Utilities and repairs are, utilities and repair are, if we go back up there, it's 3,400 together. And we're going to multiply this by 0 0.87. And that's 2,958. Depreciation is 7,500. I'm going to multiply it by 0.87, and that's going to give me 6,525. As a result, I have total expenses of 11, uh, 19,480, and my income is only 7,000. Therefore, it gave me a net loss of a net loss of uh, 12,488. Am I happy or am I? <laughs> sad as my son would say <laughs> well i am happy about this because this loss this loss is the deductible this loss is deductible okay so i'm good with this i'm okay with that now remember we have mortgage and interest let me go back up here we have mortgage and interest of um let me delete this it's becoming two Okay, I have mortgage and interest, if you notice, of 2,500 and 9,000. Now, on Schedule A, I can no longer use my mortgage, whatever mortgage interest. The mortgage interest is no longer deductible if it's a, uh, if it's a rental property. For the 2,500, for the 2,500, I already used 87% out of it. Okay, 87%. What's left is is 13%. If I take 2,500 times 13%, that's going to give me 325 that I could still deduct on Schedule A, on Schedule A. Okay, let me go down here. So remember, although I'm, so personal, really what's left for personal is 1495, but I, I can only deduct 325 for uh, 
uh, utilities and repair 442 i cannot use a 975 of depreciation left i cannot use the only thing i could sell the duct is the 325 from that from my from my taxes real estate taxes so this amount is not deductible only 325 out of it is deductible hopefully this example uh, illustrate how rental property work if you have any questions any comments by all means email me if you're studying for your exam make sure to study hard good luck and if you happen to visit my website please consider donating